Thanks for joining in. Satri, good to have you. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, all. Hi. Morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, good morning. so for all the other people, uh, uh, Shubhadeep and Satrajit are uh, the co-founders of Anti Fund, which we'll be looking at. So, uh, so the format of the thing, I think we'll wait for for say one or two minutes. But in the meanwhile, I'll just. Uh, uh, take you through, you know, what is exactly the uh, what exactly agenda would be for today. So we'll start with a small brief presentation on what angel investing is all about and what Lead Angels Network stands for. Uh, this would be followed by uh, uh, a small elevator pitch by Shubhadeep. And then we will evaluate his venture on the persistent framework. This, this will be followed by Q&A. If you have any questions in between, please write them down on the chat window on the side. Uh, you could address it to anyone and everyone, or you could address it to me. Or, uh, ideally, you should, you should say address it to everyone rather than only to me or the same. If you want to know anything about uh, joining our network, then Adil is the person whom you have to reach out to uh for any questions on that and uh i think in another two minutes we will begin uh, any questions so far maniji good morning this is girish who has joined newly to your group so I thought let me just say good morning to you and all on the call. Hi, Girish. How are you doing? Uh, fine. Thank you very much. For all the others, uh, me and Girish, I think we are connecting after 2006. Is that correct? We've exchanged some mails here and there, but I think I'm yes, yes. connecting nearly after 15 years. Uh, and uh, there's another person who's just, uh, who's just joined. This is Vishal Singh. Uh, he is uh, avidly into, you know, travel, hospitality, and avid interest in cloud kitchens. That's why he's here. We both go back to the year 1980. So, we can, you can actually call us Chaddi Buddies. And uh, uh, Saurabh Padwal is there. Saurabh, hi. Good to have you once again. Yeah, hi, sir. Himal has joined us. Himal, are you? Uh, I'm like, uh, we got connected at uh, at a market only, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Hi. How are you? Okay. So, congratulations on starting your own venture. Thank uh, you. Thank you, sir. I just saw that. <laughs> thank so you. So, I think I think we are good to go. My only request yeah. is while the presentations are going on, people can keep themselves. People can mute themselves uh, and uh, the others, uh, so uh, so that there's no disturbance over there. So very quickly, we will start with uh, and Aditya, if you could also give uh, uh, sharing uh, co-host uh, uh, rights to Shubhadeep also because he may be a present after I have the presented. So without much ado, we've got, uh, I think we've got a decent enough quorum. Let me start by uh, the uh, sharing my screen and uh, yes. Okay, is my screen visible? Hello, is my screen visible enough? Yes. Yeah, 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 we can see your skin. Okay, so there you go. So Lead Angels Network, what we are all about, we are all about startup investing. And uh, um, what, what exactly is engaging with startups all about? Well, it's like holding a small little, you know, uh, sapling that you have to really take care of. Uh, take care with, you know, the right amount of water, the right amount of fertilizer, the right amount of sunlight, and uh, the, the right amount of soil conditions, okay? So similarly, startup, uh, 
is a temporary organization in search of a, and these three things are very important, you know. It's a repeatable, scalable, and sustainable business model. Take out one out of these three, and you will have a startup that will fail for sure. Okay, so successful startups have to have all these three elements. They have found something which is which they can do it repeatedly, which they can actually scale to a larger market, and they can actually derive profits from providing that service or that product to people. That is sustainability, basically. Okay, so going forward, what is the global logic of startup investing? That sapling that you saw can turn into a redwood giant. Now that redwood giant, if you see, if you see the base, this base could be as high as 30 to 40 feet. Okay, so that, that large it is. And that is what we've seen to all these companies that are listed here, right from Amazon, Uber, Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Airbnb. And of course, many more that are there, uh, which, were, which were, you know, small saplings, which could have been, you know, trodden down by any biggie at that time, anyone like an IBM or a Microsoft, uh, etc. cetera. And, uh, but today they're there, right, standing up to everyone else. What is the Indian logic of startup investing? Okay. What does the founder need? What does the founder need exactly? He needs a problem to solve. Okay. And in India, we got plenty of them, you know. I mean, you name it, you know, there is crowd, there is traffic, there is uh, lack of infrastructure. Uh, you've, got, you've got too much of, say, cash economy. Of course, the pandemic is, has changed quite a bit of it. You've got, you got roads or potholes filled with roads, as they call it, you know. And, uh, well, India is, continues to be work in progress, okay? Uh, it, economics apart, social and cultural changes in India are super strong, and demand constraints in India, they do not apply. Why? Because we've got more than 1.3 billion population, okay? So, priced correctly, you have a market for you. Essentially, education, transportation, housing, financial services, food and beverages, across India, each have white spaces with a possibility of three to four winners, okay? Unlike the developed worlds, India is a place where you don't have only two players. You won't have any Coke and Pepsi. You won't have only Walmart and Amazon. You, in India, we can have, you know, we will have an Amazon, we'll have a Flipkart, and then a Geo will come. We'll have Airtel, Vodafone, and then a Geo will come. And once these three are there, there's someone else who may come with something else also. So Indians, by default, they hate monopolies. And they love to have, you know, three, four people so that the customer uh, uh, rights are maintained. That is a very differentiating factor in India. Again, what is the Indian logic of startup investing? We did 11 Indian startups, uh, which became Unicorn in last year, that is 2020, in spite of the pandemic. And the acceleration that we received from the uh, from from you know uh, high adoption of digital uh, technology, the digital apps, the digital world, very high adoption that accelerated the thing so and so that while we were at thirty seven uh, unicorns at the end of uh, twenty twenty, today we are at forty nine. In April alone, we had eight unicorns, and twelve in four months. Mascom study said you know we'll be fifty unicorns by the end of twenty twenty one. We are already at 49. So we are all set for a, a reaching probably 150. I won't be surprised if we do this in, by 2023 or 2024. Uh, so these are all the companies that have you know, found their white spaces and you know, created value for all stakeholders, right from Cred, Grow, Misho, Inframarket. I know many of you may ask, you know, Cred, but hey, wait, no revenue, only losses. Well, that's the way startups go. More about it later. Okay. So what are the benefits of angel investing? With all this, with all this thing about startups and other things, there are two sides that you can adopt. You know, you could either be an entrepreneur and you know take on a singular, a singular focus, uh, blinded look into a certain problem aspect and try to solve it. Or if you feel you are you like to have plenty of so many, then you could become an angel investor. What are the benefits of angel investing? You have a potential for hyper returns, uh, provided you create a portfolio. You could you could get estimated IRRs of around twenty to thirty percent. Okay, more so you will learn about new 
new technologies, new business models, new applications. Uh, since you are, you know, dealing with a young crowd who are trying to, you know, make a change in the way things are working, who are there to change the status quo. And of course, you would be you would be you'd be providing guidance to startups for improving financial and social returns to own and sundry. Okay, and supporting entrepreneurs who are making a difference. I mean, that's a that's a, that's the benevolent side of the thing which comes out. Some things, as I say, you know, uh, uh, the delight that you get when you help a startup and and he succeeds is literally like you know. You're watching your baby making, taking the first steps, winning that hurdle race, uh, getting uh, acing his maths exam or acing his history exam, or doing well in a debate. So all those things, you know, it's it's a delight actually to to see things. So so as as you see it, you know, you feel entrepreneurs spirit. Make these uh, um, early stage investments. We nurture the portfolio and also help in follow on rounds and mergers and acquisitions. But wait, what is the problem that typical angels have? Okay, so most angels have their networks in certain cities, and beyond that, where do they find quality startups pan India? Okay, how do you evaluate them? Do you have methodologies? Do you have frameworks? Do you have strategies to evaluate these startups? Do you have a process in certain place? Who will do the due diligence, the documentation, and filings to ensure compliance? And post investment. Who will help you in monitoring and support of this of your portfolio? And last but not least, this is the most important one. This is the main value creation happens in this last point. That who will help you in ensuring timely fundraise or an M&A for exits? Okay, so who does that? That's where a lead engine network comes in. Okay, what we have, we have a full-time team to create startups and assist in business review. Okay. Not only that, we use uh, as a network. We use a collective wisdom, leveraging the network effect, and the leveraging not only the network effect but the network intelligence effect for evaluation. We have we have uh, we conduct professional say, due diligence and documentation support to ensure compliance. And post investment, we continue to support our portfolio companies and and monitor our portfolio. Uh, we also have lead advisory arm, which helps in, uh, in you know helping in the follow-on rounds. More about that later. Essentially, community evaluates and the individual decides. Well, that's what lead engine is all about. Since early days, we saw you know a startup requires different kind of helps across different stages. When the when it's just about starting out, okay, it may require professional services to incorporate the company. What are the strategies to put in place? What are, what kind of agreement to be in place? What uh, kind of uh, employee agreement or founders agreement should be in place? We help that through Lead Angels Management and Professional Services. Lead Angels Network, which is our core part, is uh, which which focuses on early and seed stage investment, right up to 500k. Our typical sizes are 50 uh, uh, 50 lakh to probably. To, uh, Two and a half, three crores, but we could go up to that side. And uh, yes, but fifty lakh is largely the minimum that we look at. And we have entered into rounds which could be as high as two million dollar rounds also, as much as a fifty lakh round. Lead ad lead advisory services. This is our A surplus lead, you know, because uh, uh, being close to our portfolio, we already know what's happening over there, and. We can quickly, you know, ramp up and expedite the funding process because we understand the business model. We know what are the progress is happening, and uh, our portfolio is actually looked up to by many investors, many VC funds. In fact, many of our uh, last year investments, uh, uh, at least a couple of them, we have VCs who have who have entered along with us. Okay, in one we are leading the round, in one uh, the VC is leading the round. So that focus is largely from you know around one million dollar, I would say more of seven fifty k to uh, USD five million dollars. Okay, our process typically in any given month we've got hundred companies that we choose from. Uh, we shortlist uh, six opportunities of which uh, uh, I see the investment committee uh, further shortlist only three opportunities which could be which would be presented on a monthly basis. 
uh, and uh, once uh, we do that, based on investor interest, we take a business review along with one of the domain experts from our investor members. And uh, if found positive, we get into negotiations and issue a term sheet, get the investor commitments aggregated and uh, term sheet is issued. Post that, we do the legal and financial due diligence, which is carried out by a professional agency in, con in concert with our head finance, as well as the deal lead. Once that is cleared, we get into the documentation and facilitate in the money in the bank. While we are talking today, um, just yesterday night, we finished one transaction, Money in the Bank. This is a company called Sarthi.ai, uh, which is into conversational AI. Of course, post-investment, we continue to monitor and support our companies and help them with various things across the world. It could be strategy, it could be finance, it could be uh, opening doors, uh, or it could just be, you know, I mean, uh, hey, a pandemic has come again. What do we do now? So give them a shoulder to cry on or, or probably, you know, sit across the table and brainstorm how to uh, how to walk out of this alive. Decisions are solely individual, the LA team handholds. So that's what our journey has been so far, 15K applications over more than six years, uh, 2000 uh, vetted by the investment committee of which 950 plus deals were showcased. And uh, we have invested in around 45 plus startups in this time frame. Follow on fundraise and or m and have been nearly 15 companies. So that's our track record. Uh, many of you may ask, what is our bust ratio? So that is less than 20%, probably uh, more so in the figure of around seven companies that may have gone belly up, which is a phenomenal ratio considering most people talk about, you know, nine out of 10 startups will fail. Now, why, uh, when you are investing into startups, it is very important to build a portfolio. Okay, one, if you have all your investments in one uh, single company, uh, if that basket falls, all the eggs will break. So what you do is you you do uh, you need to uh, reduce the risk, you need to reduce the sectoral impact reduction, and uh, you need to you know diversification can be of two types: one is sectoral as well as growth stage or exit timing oriented diversification. At Lead Angels, we, we are not only sector agnostic, but we pride ourselves in the fact that we are really good in sniffing early stage category creators. Also, we have a good handle because of our presence and our reputation in the market. Other networks reach out to us, or we also get you know uh, slightly mature companies which have far greater uh, stability and which stage and the high growth stage company. The valuation may be a little higher over there, but this really helps you balance out your portfolio. So we always say, we always suggest to our people that diversify your risk, have, uh, you know, uh, if you have invested in two edtech companies, the third company should not be edtech. If you've invested in fintech, you move on to something else. So that's the way we, we you know, coach and assist our investor members also. Well, that's our portfolio. It includes Shop Kerala, which has grown from four crores to four crores. You got Godesi, which has grown from two lakh to probably more than a crore in a month. Uh, we got Nikki.ai, grew more than five times in through the pandemic. We got Gameji, which has grown eight times since the pandemic. Since the first wave, I would say pandemic. We are again. In, I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, we got Super Daily got acquired by Sugi. Lotto providing uh, uh, low fat, low cholesterol. Uh, ice cream for uh, people to have guilt-free dessert experience. Uh, and uh, of course, we've got, we've got Oki Pocky, which is into uh, creating, uh, in terms of edtech, we've got Oki uh, This is English for vernacular family kids and Planet Spark for uh, online learning, for English creative learning. Uh, Benita got acquired by Enrich Saloon. DriveU got acquired by Driver's Cart. So this is some of our portfolio. Our team, Sushanta Mitra, founder of uh, First External CEO of SIGN, which is Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Uh, that is IIT Mumbai Incubator. Venkat uh, is a partner at uh, Avishkar Frontier Fund. Uh, Dhruv, he is, uh, he is a very integral part of ours. He's, he, he's an ex-professor uh, ex at MDI and also the author 
of the book, Funding Your Startup, wherein lots of our learnings and strategies that we have built around investment, uh, uh, around early stage investment that have gone into this book, co-authored with Sushanta Mitra, who has been my guru since probably, what, uh, more than two decades now. Uh, we go back to 1999. Uh, we got uh, Shuman Sen Gupta, who's our head professional services heading LAMPS. Uh, I mean, if I send a voucher, which is a month late, probably that may not get reimbursed. He's that strict with us. So he helps us in say, keeping checks on the, on the portfolio. Myself, uh, I've got nearly two decades experience. Got my first startup, uh, the client funded in 1998. Kruti, very passionate. Uh, I mean, we are the oldies lot, and this is the young lot. So, like, you have Sakruti, uh, who is uh, Kruti and uh, Kunal Balerao are helping us get the right kind of uh, startups for our members. Fennel is in Fennel and Tanmay are involved in helping these companies raise the next round. And that's about all. These are our these are our, all our social media as a presence, and of course, we are there on YouTube also. So I uh, would end it over here. Shivriti, are you all yes. set? Yes, Manish, hi. OK. Uh, so uh, I think I am more or less on time. Yeah. Uh, right. Right. Is a marketing right. Right. Is uh, Aditya, could you check who is, who is uh, speaking or someone? Are you, Anand Krishna, could you mute yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, good could afternoon, you, sir. Could you mute yourself? Yes, good afternoon. Yes, very good afternoon. Please, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, So, well, uh, I'm a BTEC from, uh, from Kolkata and a marketing graduate from NMIMS, we have Shubhadeep with us, uh, who honed his uh, business skills at GE to begin with, and then Johnson & Johnson. Uh, Shubhadeep started Antifunks way back in 2015. Antifunks, a very own Desi Asian street food brand across, he started out with a, with a proper restaurant across Ramaya, Bangalore. So, so Shubhadeep, would you please introduce yourself briefly and give us an elevator pitch, what your role, what Antifunks is all about? Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Manish. So, good morning, everybody. And first of all, a big thank you to all the Lead Angels team for giving us this opportunity today. So, uh, so yeah, so I, I, an engineer, an MBA by qualification, but always wanted to be a food entrepreneur. So uh, took the plunge in 2015 to build this brand around Asian street food. It's a, it's a brand on quick service format, uh, bringing the, the finest delicacies from different Asian countries. So what you get in the streets of say a Bangkok or a Vietnam uh, or a Malaysia, Auntie Fung is bringing it to the masses through her uh, authentic recipes and value price point. So that was the thought with which I started, not a, with, with zero background, just a passionate foodie and always wanted to be a food entrepreneur. Took the plunge in 2015 and it's been six years. Yes, a lot of ups and downs, roller coaster ride, but enjoying every bit of it. So. Super, super. So, uh, so guys, as an as an elevator pitch, this is a pan Asian food. In 2015, India is known for you know Indo Chinese food. Aapko fried rice mil jayega, aur chow mein ya hakka noodle mil jayega. Now more so, and apart from that, you get momos at every nook and corner. You'll have uh, some person who will just have a, you know, uh, stall with some, say, steamed stuff and all. And on one side, you'll have chicken. Hopefully, that is chicken. <laughs> and on the other side, you got your cabbage <laughs> and cottage cheese ones. Uh, so, yes, that's what that's what he actually decided to change. Uh, so, so, what is the problem statement that you're exactly trying to solve at that time, Shubhadeep? Okay, so uh, see, I think uh, so. The in, in India, Chinese cuisine is there in our palate, right? It's the number one international cuisine in India. 
but if you just go the length and breadth and all the top metro cities or any city uh when it comes to asian food it just starts and ends with chinese but during my travel uh to some of these southeast asian countries whether it's bangkok or vietnam or singapore during my jnj days what i realized that street food there is so so popular i mean people actually they are staying in the five stars but they are coming out and having the street food there and and it's such buzzing uh, uh, night markets but when it comes to india you go to the super fine dines or the five star hotels for having a authentic pan asian meal a thai food or a vietnamese food or a burmese food that's that was the gap so using chinese as a hook uh, can we take the indian consumers to the more flavorful pan asian cuisine without burning a hole in the pocket that's the gap that's the white space which anti funks is filling up there's no brand a pan india brand which is doing that so what dominos did to pizza if you see i mean dominos uh, we were we are not a pizza eating country but dominos through its india specific innovations and value pricing it has reached the dining table of every middle class in india so what dominos did to pizza anti funks will do it with asian cuisine okay so affordable prices yet value pricing i would say yes uh, absolutely and uh, and uh, i mean uh, okay now talk about earnings i mean i'm starting okay. out uh, should i uh, should i quickly run through a, 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 a few pages or how do you want yes please yeah, yeah. Let, I, this will just give a broad perspective to the entire audience as to what right. the venture right. is all about visually it helps so so i so just to start with i think this is the cuisine gap so this slide broadly talks about uh, the representation of the food service market in india a uh, different cuisines on one axis and pricing on the other axis and so value and premium or super premium value we mean a meal for two should be within 500 rupees that's the sweet spot and if you see in the premium space there are enough and more brands whether it's a papaya min lunch and a launched asia kitchen fatty bow and all but the white space is in the value price point and that's the gap which anti funks is filling up we also launched two more brands within the asian umbrella uh, once the pandemic hit to uh, to improve our kitchen efficiency we'll spend more time later on this so our vision is simple to be the face of asian street food in a quick service healthy format and it rests on three critical pillars first one is all about our consumers and the value price point which i have already touched so who are our consumers the millennials the pg students the early jobbers and then the young families the double income young families the second pillar is all about our product the the, the curated menu all the signature dishes of different asian countries whether it's a houseway from burma to a thai curry from thailand to a pho from vietnam it anti is taking it to the masses and also the the ensuring around quality no msg no artificial color so the goodness of it in the bowl and the last pillar is all about our operations it's an extremely lean asset light frugal model so that you are able to scale fast and break even faster so these are the three critical pillars which adds rolls up to our vision so when covid impacted us i think pre covid from 2015 till 2019 we were predominantly a dine in driven 68% of our business was dine in stores inside food court uh, mall uh, food court in the shopping malls business parks dine in was going strong but life changed in feb march of 20 uh, 2020 business started plummeting you can see yes from a 28.6 lakh in jan 2020 we reached 5.2 lakh in the month of april uh, but more important what we saw is that consumer behavior started changing people shifted for everything online whether medical needs fmcg needs everything online hygiene was of paramount importance and people started looking for brands on every purchase decision and with all these changes businesses also started realigning themselves so we actually took three major steps once pandemic hit us first was tweaking our operations remove the dine in focused menu items have a delivery focused menu and open three new cloud kitchens between april and august of last year second with the kitchen infra in place how can we improve kitchen efficiency so launch two more cloud specific brands crazy bow uh, we have always believed that bow can and bow does well for us in anti funks so bow can bring in the next burger revolution that's what our feeling thought is so we launched a brand specific around called crazy bow and the second a pure play tactical tool just to tide over the crisis on usual indo chinese the brand called hungry panda and the third pillar was all how do you build the consumer trust and faith so a communication around safe packaging what are the hygiene measures that we are taking a sanitizer sachet we going with every parcel uh, a founders note uh, reaching to every consumer so these were the softer side to address the consumer panic so with all these things yes numbers plummeted till april and till august we corrected all those things but from august onwards numbers started growing up 
and we reached pre covid in the month of november and from there on business grew further so we are currently we are at around 130 to 140% of what we were doing a monthly average in pre covid but yes you can see in the pie chart below business has turned upside down from a 68% dine in brand we are an 80% delivery brand today and this is the six year report card we have grown year on year but fy 1920 is when we uh, more than doubled our business and fy 21 Uh, in spite of a complete washout q1 we we limped we limped back in q2 and bounced back strongly in q3 and q4 so to finish the year at the same level as last year so what's our way forward plans now currently we are planning to raise 3 crore to accelerate our growth for the next 18 months and 1.5 50% we will go uh, use on expansion 18 cloud kitchens up uh, 70 odd lakh we've kept for uh, building our back end capability and of uh, uh, whether it's on team base kitchen and few other things and 75 lakh for digital marketing and as a working capital cushion out of these 3 crore we already have the commitment of 2 crore from india angel network so our ask from lead angels is 1 cr and with this how do the numbers stack up i think this is slide gives you a, about unit economics i think being having bootstrap for a good 4 years frugality is in our dna and that has helped us to ensure that we are doing about our break even is nominal 4 4.2 you break even in a month and as we scale up now from the from the proceeds of this round so currently we are doing about 40 41 lakh per month this in the next 12 to 18 months we want to take this monthly number to about 1.8 to 2 crore per month which will be uh, growing the business by 4 and a half 5x from the current levels and that's when we go for the next round of fundraise so that's antifunks in a nutshell in 5 minutes this is our effort to being creative a poem around antifunks so take a walk around asia with antifunks so yes manish over to you and the thank, team thank you so much if thank you me. if you could if you could remove the slide now i'll just put one now yes. uh, so we've been talking about persistent framework that we have developed that has been developed between sushanto and dhruvnath yes uh, so we so we already covered you know what what is the problem area you already covered in terms of the revenue and the pricing model you have already discussed in some manner okay now yes. coming to the next thing the risks associated now the mother of all risks the pandemic where it started let me uh, in the meanwhile also get on to uh one sec just one moment sure. uh, so uh moving forward so evaluating it on uh, persistent framework the problem statement you said was kevel chinese hai only chinese is there and when you are when you wanting something like pan asian which now a lot of us have you know we been traveling across to vietnam to korea to the um, to singapore to indonesia to malaysia and all these places so people have got a palette for that now so you thought to create a nationwide thing for that correct correct i think i, I think you're right and just to add on i think this travel and tourism has given a huge fillip to uh, this cuisine whether uh, okay the last 12 months has been terrible for tra travel and tourism but otherwise whether it's for a family getaway or office conferences i think southeast asia has been our most popular destination and that has definitely helped the food and uh, the palate uh, people trying out that cuisine yeah so and more so in 2015 you know when you started there at that time you didn't have any you didn't have a fatty bow in 2015 i don't think it was there but it is just around come in fatty bow it, it had just it had just come in fatty bow had opened yes. one in indranagar bangalore yes manish sure, right sure. uh, okay so so in terms of the earnings model or the pricing model you are largely keeping it a, uh, a you know a value premium segment Which yes, is five hundred yeah. rupees for a meal for two. For a meal for two, but okay. one thing I would like to add on this earning model. I mean, uh, I've always believed that yes, there's nothing called a free lunch. So we've ensured that right from day one, every customer is a paid customer, and your food cost and so that that positive unit economics is is there. So that from every noodle that I sell or every houseway that I sell, there is a good positive EBITDA. There is a there is a positive cash flow to that. Yes. Okay. Super. Okay. Now risks associated, as I said, you know, now the mother of all risks, the pandemic happened last year, and lo and behold, you had your sales dipping right from you know uh, what 
20, 29 lakhs to 5 lakhs. 5, five lakhs. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, what was the immediate first thought when it happened? <laughs> well, I, you're right. I think the definition of risk has completely changed in the last 12 months. So, no doubt about that. But uh, as you rightly said, I think when business hit and when pandemic hit us, the first, the big, honestly speaking, the, the first anxiety that both me and my co-founder had was not about the sales number. First was probably the safety of the entire team. That as founders, because somewhere down the line, I think we are extremely responsible for the for that entire team. So first was that, and then once those things are okay, reasonably sorted, safety of the people are there, all the hygiene measures are in place, and then we, when we started evaluating that, okay, how do we now turn the things back? But and one important thing, and see, I think a lot of times, I mean, who are our consumers? Our consumers are also people like me and Shatrajit. And so, so while we will be biased, so what we realize that what, how, what's our friends group doing or our college juniors doing, who is pretty much our TG. And you realize that, okay, people are locked up at home, but underlying demand for food delivery, is, it's still there. It's so deep rooted in our culture now. Yes. It's, it's, it's still there. So that was like the Eureka moment or that was like that light at the end of the tunnel from our consumer thought process. And also that took from, from this, Five lakh war. How did we do this? Five uh, two stores were allowed to operate during that time. I mean, from a regulatory standpoint. And what we realized from those two stores, we are still doing about 20, 25 orders per day. And who are these? When you go deep on the data, you realize okay, those are the repeat customers. So they who have been ordering from me for the last three, four years, they are ordering. So which means, okay, one fundamentally, food delivery is very deep rooted in our culture. People who are locked up at home, food delivery is probably the only source of entertainment in this entire madness around. And second, if you have that trust and faith in a brand, which was happening from those stores which were allowed to operate, I think we will bounce back. Now let's do the, the how do we bounce back? So and that's when, okay, delivery is, is going to further grow up. Anyways, food delivery was picking up for the last three, four years. Pandemic has just given that adrenaline push. So let's f focus on cloud kitchens and started calling up people. And in, in fact, the one in Kamanahalli, Bangalore, we actually opened in the month of April and May first week, which was like the peak of lockdown, peak of madness last year. So, but but yes, we, I mean, I used to walk seven kilometers from my home to do the food trials there. Uh, and we did that. And things started uh, showing up from August onwards, the numbers. Okay. Uh, and and then, of course, I think you would have shifted your strategy from, from a dine-in perspective to more of a delivery-focused so, so there yes. the so, a lot of things around so tweaking around on on the food on on what should the menu be there's some things are made more dine in oriented menu items which we got right. rid of that added a few delivery right. focused things then even the kitchen okay. operations how the packaging will happen and those those things so we tweaked all those operational things but at a strategic level once we figured out okay we'll have to pivot and do these and have a multi brand approach and then right. all these operational things we we ironed out in the next 2 months so the thing, uh, and I'm pretty sure you would have already been looking at a cloud kitchen earlier also, but yes. this pandemic had speeded it up and instead of uh, doing your capital investments on say restaurants or say uh, say physical outlets, you focused on cloud kitchens, which is a far uh, more expansionary kind of a thing. True, true. And, uh, okay. And, and much and much faster, in, in fact. Of course, no to it. No much, to it much, that. much faster. And, okay. Now, Size of the market, okay. I'll just uh, rent out some numbers, okay. Tell me if it's true or not, and where did you fit in this pie, okay? Yeah, uh, so from a 400 million dollar cloud kitchen market mm -hmm. in 2019, it is expected to rise to probably uh, two billion dollars by 2024. Correct, cloud correct. Kitchen. Correct. So 5,000 kitchens, 5,000 cloud kitchens in, 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 I think, 20, uh, 29, 2019, sorry, 2020, 2020, it is expected to grow at 50 to 60%, the number true. of units true, true. year it, on year, right? Yes, yes. Okay, because at, at what cost? Obviously, the dining restaurants that were coming, those are totally shifting over to the scale because you and me are not going to go to a dining. I mean, if you will go, that will be maybe once in a... Yes, on very, very exclusive occasions. Very, I very think 
but the new normal will be very different from what it was in 2019 true so the size of the market so the size of the market is at 2 billion dollars in which in that how much do you see this Panation kind of thing uh... is is huge. I think yes. So in fact, just to share some numbers. So uh, and and the source of this number is the Barbecue Nation IPO prospectus, which came out. So uh -huh. the overall Asian cuisine, which includes the Chinese and the Panation in right. India, currently is about thirty one thousand crore. And this I'm just saying the organized market. We are not including the roadside guys who is dishing out. Super delicious hakka noodles and the fried rice. Just the mm -hmm. organized market itself is about thirty-one thousand crore. So the market yes. is huge and it will only grow with this entire Philip around ordering in further growing up and more and more. Uh, even I think tier two, tier three markets will also play a big role in this growth because with this pandemic, people can work from a tier two, tier three town and they will also start ordering in more. So, so it's it's just only, and I think this fifty sixty percent also uh, the the growth number which you said. Even I read that report, but mm. we don't we don't. I mean, I mean, it's very difficult to preempt how much of uh, injection push this entire pandemic and the behavior change will give this to this growth percentage. So it can actually double year on year. Okay. And okay. It could be far more. You are saying it, can, it could be far more, but okay. but this okay. size of market on the oriental space is just thirty one thousand crore. Only of in the organized space, so it's huge. Now, now, so one question which which we as we as angel investors are typically asked, you know, what is the innovation you are talking about? What is the differentiation? What is the USP? Is there any secret sauce, unfair advantage that you have? Which yes, could... yes. So I would I would say uh, uh, without uh, diverging without uh, diverging. No, 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 no. It's 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 fine. I think see, I don't need to say. Even if I share the recipe, that's also okay because I feel, I mean. Uh. The secret sauce is something much deeper in this, and I would say innovation and the entry barrier. I would like to club the two and give you what we mean. By. So innovation in our business is one. So we have a good 30, 35 percent to repeat customers month on month, and uh, in some stores it's as high as 50 percent. In some it's 30, 30 percent. And mm. what so and while and the repeats play an important role just to give you that feedback. Okay, what you are doing is right, or what you are doing is not right. And but but the the repeat customers also. Get, uh, beyond the point how you have have food fatigue setting in so innovation so two to three times on on the on the service offering side of it some of the innovation that we do is we should have two to three times a food festival a very limited menu but just to bring in that new news so that the food fatigue for my repeat customers does not set in and okay. i build a, a a new news content on the marketing front so that i get those new trials also so it serves dual okay. purpose. So that should that should be an ongoing thing. And you, how you, uh, there are a few tactical elements. How you time the innovation should be around the troughs, the two seasonal troughs, which we generally see in the full year. We should time it during that time so that you have a new news and that pushes up the numbers. So those are the tactical sides of it. So innovation Just on the food service is this. Then also the innovation on the, on the overall business model. Yes, we have pivoted to a cloud specific model, but a lot of new new things like kitchen infra companies coming up. And uh, can we uh, just tying up with them so that all the commodity side of it, the real estate, the actual hard kitchen assets, we are completely outsourcing and moving from a KPIX to an OPEX model. While we just control the food part of it, the team training, the, the team and dishing out the best food. So that, and because that's what is our IP is and that's what will build the brand. While all the commodity part of it, we just outsource, whether it's the delivery guy uh, uh, doing the delivery through a Swiggy, Zomato or a Dunzo, in US, like a delivery in US and UK, so uh, and even the kitchen real estate part of it. So that's the innovation thing which we do, uh, which serves the consumer acquisitions part of it and driving top line, and also to to tie it back with the entry thing. I think on the on this business on the face of it gives you a perception that anybody can open up. Yes, I have money. I feel ha vada pav bahut chal raha hai Bombay mein. I am from Narsi Munji, Miti Bai College, the vada pav hub of Bombay. Ha vada pav bahut ha vada pav bahut chal raha hai. Chalo, let's open a vada pav in Vashi close to my house. That it on the face of it, it has low entry barrier, but it will it it has low entry barrier when you are thinking it as a one store two store lifestyle phenomena. But right. the joy but the joy of this business comes at scale, and that was something which both of us were clear that we don't want to be the owners of a two store restaurant brand. If the joy will come at scale when you have hundred stores, and the joy will come when you are building a brand at scale, and with that. The biggest entry barrier that we, that builds as uh, you when you build a brand at scale 
is when you are tying in that strategic vision with all the operational nitty gritties, the SOPs of the standardization, the, the product, the innovation pipeline, and all these things put together. So, okay. uh, so that that so these two put so innovation and this uh, the entire operational roadmap marrying your strategic vision with all the operational nitty gritties becomes the biggest moat or my biggest entry barrier. Facebook was not Facebook is not the first social media company. Google is not the last of them. It was the last of them. Yes, and Google it's is MySpace, Orkut, and all those. Yes, and uh, Google and Google is actually the number thirteen search engine. Oh uh, yes, yes. So so. But what they did, and neither is a Chai Point or a Chai was the first tea cafe in India. So you have to marry the strategic vision with all these operational detailing, and then that becomes the moat. So ladies and gentlemen, here's a venture whose secret sauce is actually secret sauces. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so which he imports directly from, from their respective countries. Now talk about scalability. We've already covered what you are looking at. You've already mentioned. So I'll not uh, take that. The market is huge. Scalability is there. You have already done that. You there. The US are present across how many locations now? How many? And we are present in eight locations now, spread across two cities. Eight. And with this new round, you are looking at expanding to twenty plus locations. Yes. Or or cumulative twenty locations. You know. No, twenty. Eighteen uh, to twenty locations more. Plus the, this eight will remain. So if, okay. in totality, we should be having twenty eight to thirty. Okay. 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 Now team. Yes, team. I will come to it later. I will. Uh, uh, so team he's already mentioned uh, his viewpoint his he said doggedness and you know pandemic or no pandemic first focus was is my team all right is my team taken care of okay am i uh, should i get the right gears for them the gloves for them the procedure for you know for testing them for covid and other things all things he's already mentioned he was doing okay and uh, the team as as he mentioned that you know i was never a cook I have not been trained on that side, but I have learnt it on the on the thing. And I he had it in him. He had the passion in him to bring all that is available in those uh, in the streets of Asia across these cloud kitchens and some of the key is a restaurant in Gurgaon. It's in Galleria in uh, Bangalore. Which two places is it there? So it's so we are there in uh, New Deal Road opposite Ramaya, where it started six years back. Then we are there in Yalahanka. And we are okay. there uh, in Kamanahalli and Sajjapur. Okay. Antibodies we've covered. Nish we've covered. He is talking about the Nish, which is you know the the millennials, the dinks, and people who are looking for value meals as a change to what the thing is. At my home also, I'm like at least at least twice a week, even this pandemic time, we order from outside. Okay, and uh, last but not the least, traction. You already covered it. You've grown it from twenty nine, came down to five, and now you are at around forty lakh per month. You are looking at ramping it up. So, looking at these things, the moment you say, so when we analyze the company through all these parameters, we have a fair idea of you know, would this be interesting for our investor members? Is this a company that could actually Make money or create wealth for our investor members, and one of the key things that we look for is the entrepreneur himself. What are the key things that entrepreneur should have? I don't know if many of you have heard. Any one of you? Uh, so, should we be aware of uh, what is the etymology of the word entrepreneur? What, what is the what of the word entrepreneur? Etymology. What's its origin? No, I don't know. Sorry, no. Okay, so entreprendre in French, okay, means to undertake. Okay, okay. And entrepreneur in a very own Sanskrit, huh. self-motivated. Oh, interesting. Okay, no, no, this is okay. totally eye-opening. Okay. So a self-motivated person who undertakes to make a make a paradigm shift, change the status quo. That in in the real world is an entrepreneur. What are the key traits? Extreme passion. Okay. So while we are evaluating a startup, we would also evaluate the founder himself. Okay, is he really passionate about what he is doing? Is he inquisitive? How does this happen? Can I make it better? Can he? Can we do it differently? If we do this, then what happens? The person who loves to experiment. True. True. Is he a risk taker? Does he have infectious energy levels? Because he he has to excite not only his co-founders but his team members, his suppliers, 
the his customers then his investors then the world over to believe in his dream you know and then of last but not least he he needs to be a good listener and you may tell your story but if someone comes who is maybe more experienced or less experienced than you and says some pearls of wisdom and uh, you think that could actually make difference to your venture he should have the capacity to you know imbibe it and, and probably you know of course do the pros and cons but be ready to implement it rather than just say brushing it off uh one of the key things that we do at lead angels is also i'm like a person who listens to everything and does everything we say i would not invest into him a person who listen who does not listen to anything of mine and doesn't do anything that person also i would not invest into anything he should be he should have a spine but he should know when to be malleable when to be ductile because being a startup being a being a startup founder is all about you know being able to pivot whenever required okay as mentioned by peter drucker a true entrepreneur always searches for change responds to it and exploits it in as an opportunity that's what shubhadi did when 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 the pandemic hit and he went from the restaurant side to to a you know cloud kitchen model i mean i would end uh, i think with that we end the model any q and a uh, any questions the floor is open to the listening um uh, yeah good morning good afternoon sir hi anand how are you yeah i am good sir so basically i am from madhya pradesh uh, i belongs to a village named okay. umri damoh district okay. and we have a small startup like earlier i started in 2016 yeah. with education sector so currently we are running 65 school in different rural areas of okay. uh, Mad- of uh, madhya pradesh and also we have started working in agriculture sector so we have started organic farming and organic food processing unit so currently yes what is your question yes my question is that how a rural startup can get connected because tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 cities also okay but we are here in very like poor district and we are very rural people and we are working here across in the rural areas so how then then let's have a let's have a chat off topic after this after this thing you can go sure. on linkedin my number is okay. over here adil you can put your uh, say contacts and and my contacts on the chat window for everyone sure 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 okay thank you very much sir hi manish saurabh here i have a question for subhradeep Yes, sir. Go ahead. So, so Subhrati, the thing is, even I am from this uh, background. I used to have my own uh, QSR kitchen, and the name of the uh, kitchen was Ethnic Kitchen, and I kind of scaled up it around three to four kitchens. The question I, uh, due to pandemic, the question I have over here is that uh, since due to pandemic, there is a lot of loss of jobs. People are not having the, the basically uh, income to uh, look after their household. and uh, the the kind of uh, so restaurant splurge uh, or a cloud kitchen splurge is what i feel is a kind of a uh, it comes out of a excess of money as in a person who is earning a lot he sorry we have muted yourself mute sorry he would yeah yeah so uh, so the pers- uh, so the person who is eating out from a restaurant or a cloud kitchen he would be fro- uh, in a week or thrice or twice uh, uh, or four times would uh, be definitely don't you think that your industry is more of related to the income of the people which is currently now being hit due to pandemic and uh, going forward uh, it is going to be a challenge for people out, uh, ordering food from outside is going to be a tougher task for you okay thank you no i think uh, uh, while i hear you out and i understand where you're coming from but i have two three data points to share i think and that's where our value pricing played a very very important role that yes uh, I, i cannot burn a hole in my pocket but at the same time i get good quality food and a very differentiated food now if you see yes pandemic hit and yes we are reading uh, that okay a lot of people have lost jobs but do you know that flipkart or amazon even the mobile phone sales in the entire period has actually grown and all uh, they have i mean some of my friends are and ex bosses are in amazon and flipkart so they're actually they've actually grown over the pre pandemic numbers 
so uh, if i remove the supply chain challenges so uh, so food delivery while i understand yes maybe the students who were that extremely price sensitive where they want their uh, the hakka noodles at 100 rupees and also they would have left but in this price point honestly we haven't seen that impact and even swiggy zomato which is like the most democratic platforms at a, at a platform level their traffic also bounced back after the first 3 4 months and if you remember dipinder goel tweeted right in december month zomato traffic was actually far ahead of even the pre covid numbers so so yeah. while yeah. while i understand that the bottom of the pyramid it has been hit but in this middle segment uh the opportunities are still there and to adding to manish's point i think all of us in this call we may not go to a mall or go to a fine dine as frequently as we were doing till 2019 but delivery will only grow up food ordering food is the biggest source of entertainment for all of us at home work from home party at home and so on and so forth so i i genuinely feel that uh, if the, this this will only this has a has a very promising uh, next 5 to 10 years i'll just add i'll just add something to this say uh, uh, say shubhadeep and uh, saurabh this is the best of the times and this is the worst of the times so said charles dickens okay this is the worst of the times for the restaurants but the best of the times for the delivery guys for the cloud kitchens the matter is going ipo next year true okay for sure or this year is it right next few months they've already find the red ah. <laughs> so, so what you will see and you are not going to any movie hall you are watching all ott movies you, everyone is going for home delivery i'm like your home ministries would you know raise their hand and throw a fit you know boss enough is enough ho gaya kitchen ka kaam ya to tum banao ya mangwa lo your choice <laughs> what do you do <laughs> okay that's true that's true is a sort of and plus the niche that is that is talking about is 500 rupees for a meal for two this is not typically the student segment Student segment would be more in the fifty to hundred rupee per person. Okay, yes. and uh, so yeah, I think I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, now any other questions? Desh Bandhu asks, at starting, how do we calculate projection for any startup? Oh well, Desh Bandhu, you'll have to give me fifty percent of your company for me to train you on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so a lot goes into it. The kind of stuff that we talked about right now, we you need to know what kind of market size currently exists. What are you part of? You talk about you know how how large is the market is total available market. Then of that, what will be your share of market in that? Okay, and in that, how much? How will you expand yourself in in that market? That is what you are looking at. Use the persistent framework again. How how big the problem is, how large the market is, how much you can scale through. What will be your advantages? And use that to calculate in a logical manner how much you will be able to reach. Okay, that is how you will go about. Uh, and most importantly, you need to know the cost metrics in a perfect manner. Okay, while we are at, uh, we've got Satrujit right here. Satrujit, your your viewpoint. What made you join Shubhadeep? I mean, finding co-founders is hard, and finding good founders is. Let me tell you, I mean, Shubhadeep, I think you're pretty lucky in that. Uh, fingers crossed and touch wood to that. Satyajit, over to you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, our friendship and relationship goes back, uh, to, as you uh, as you kind of <laughs> framed it, chaddi buddies. So we we have uh, we were in the same school and you know we grew up together pretty much and um, and of course uh, we had different uh, when we post our school we went different paths uh, he was in the engineering I I went into economics and social science and then uh, MBA subsequently he also did his MBA from Bombay I did it from Calcutta and then obviously our paths were different marketing and you know marketing analytics. uh customer satisfaction that was what my domain was whereas his was more sales uh but we always kept in touch and uh, and very interestingly um you know the place where i uh, where i did my mba and also worked eventually uh, the first job uh shubhadeep's wife was also uh, working in the same place 
So somewhere or the other, we've, we've been in touch pretty much. So, and we've been in our job working, uh, working quite peacefully, I would say. Uh, and, and at some level, uh, <clears throat> uh, we always used to discuss that, you know, uh, we should do something, you know, and Bengalis are really, uh, you know, uh, not so entrepreneurial, uh, so to speak, if I get oh, yes. oh, like yes. So, so we've it. been having yes. those debates and, you know, uh, and of course, uh, there are uh, there are folks around when we, he was in Bangalore and ba I was in Bombay and then Delhi and people around were all, uh, you know, getting into entrepreneurship. And mm -hmm. that was the time when, uh, you know, when in her in his own parallel visits to Southeast Asia and obviously uh, we all we used to work in MNCs. So we were sent to trips abroad, both for, uh, you know, business meetings as well as for pleasure as well. So mm -hmm. in those visits, we kind of saw those uh, buzzing street food culture that uh, that exists in Asian or pretty much all Asian countries, whether it's a Bangkok or whether it's a Vietnam, Hanoi, or whether it's uh, it's Hong Kong. So uh, those street food culture and and that re resonates so much with uh, with the Indian street food culture as well. And oh, yes. finally, we are and the Golgappas and the and the Golgappas, yeah, and Calcutta, so, so of course is. <laughs> Like uh, Calcutta, Delhi, Bombay, or each have their own nuances in terms of street food. And of course, yeah, Jalmuri. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's where uh, uh, you know Jubhadeep uh, kind of said that you know I go. This is a space, and he and his wife also. Uh, his wife is also from the market research background. So oh. uh, they kind of identified uh, uh, this that value space where none. Of, which, which we, uh, the first presentation, we began with that, uh, we began with that slide in the first slide. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That was the gap that really exists both from a uh, pricing perspective as well as from, from a clutter perspective. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we said that, you know, this seems to be a great opportunity. And, uh, and of course, he began in 2015 and uh, a couple of years later, uh, and he was looking, and we used to always keep discussing about the brand. So when the brand opened, in Bangalore, I had visited, uh, and uh, and things were moving positively, so to speak, in terms of whether it's whether it's the kind right kind of uh, you know we started with the hypothesis that those Asian items should be our best sellers, you know, at some level, uh, oh. because we have we believe that 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 was the niche that we are catering to, and in actual reality, uh, the, whether the khausway or the sates or the yakitoris. Uh, those are the ones which were the top sellers and it continues to be the top seller even today. Uh, and that is, and that is when, you know, we got a firmness in terms of uh, the concept and that's when we brought it to Delhi as well. And we wanted to see it in two, two different markets completely. One is, uh, of course, one is both are uh, epicenters of food in their own, uh, in their own terms. Uh, one is, uh, slightly more evolved, the, uh, and the Delhi market is far more, um, you know, the Delhi palette is a little different than the Bangalore palette and we wanted to test out in two different markets, so to speak. And both places we saw a fair bit of traction. And that's so when we tried over, So you took over Gurdav and he, and he said that I'll take care of say, Bangalore basically. Right, because finally it's a very hands-on business. It requires yeah. a lot of operational, um, you know, you have to be entrenched into operations day in and day oh, yes, out. Yes, yes. Food uh, business, food business is all about knowing your costs and and say and having the right kind of efficiency. Yes. Uh, I, I think especially we, at the definitely at the early stage. At the early stage. Uh, we can't behave like laptop CEOs and uh, stay at home. Then then it's, the, it's then it's death nail. A good restaurant is one which does the founder himself does his own shopping. He checks which is the chicken which piece of chicken will go in which dish? Correct. Which sauce will go in which? And how much sauce will go in what? And none is wasted. True. 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 Okay. But so, then, but then, to that part, but then that's not a scalable thing. So we'll have to figure out how do we. Huh. So then the uh, menu and those things. Train the people. Yes. So yes. yeah, train the trainer kind of programs. Train the trainer yeah. module. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So that yeah. brings back to the point that you know, while it's from the face of it, it seems easy. Because finally, you can you can get the chicken and so to speak. I'm saying that it's not that I pick up a bag and every morning I go and uh, buy chicken and fish and uh, vegetables. But the fact that you know you have to uh, run the show in terms of 
what is it that makes and and if i and if you can call it the secret sauce that is the secret sauce that you have to really roll up your sleeves and do get down get down into this business and run very your true, very true. day in and day out and that is i think at some level gives clarity in terms of what works and what doesn't work in this industry yeah i think just to just to add uh, manish to on yeah. on on your question which you asked shatrujit i think uh, i would like to add two things i think uh, a few things which clicked when we actually decided to that he will come on board as a co-founder mm. is i think uh, the most important thing entrepreneurship is all in the mind it's a, it's a behavioral trait and i think both of us had that both our dads uh, we come from uh, uh, my dad and his dad both were entrepreneurs so so that wiring was probably there in both of us yeah. and when i and when i i started in 2015 and our conversations always continued i used to bounce off a lot of ideas with him and conversations always continued and he used to keep telling me that okay let me do one thing should i take a franchise of yours in in delhi and start and i would i i would, I would always used to say him that uh, see as as the brand owner i would love to do that but don't do it till the time you decide to quit your job and do it because exactly I, exactly you have, you have to be all in and it's in. my it's my responsibility to to, to warn you that mm. paisa doob jayega it this business cannot be just another business along with my 9 to 5 thing true i mean true. this Very is true. not not a thing because i it's my responsibility ye theek hai tum daloge 15 20 lakh yeah. 99% chance doob jayega and then our friendship will go for, for a toss and incidentally uh, for for all the audience a very the highest rate of mortality in any business is in the restaurant business true or the food business True. as i say it is the easiest to start and the first one to shut down because you've not looked at the right kind of purchases or you got you not got the right kind of thing and or you've not given the free lunch or the dinner to the food inspector <laughs> <laughs> you know and just just to add on to this point manish this uh, this uh, data which you shared if yeah. you see yes in in bangalore or in any city for that matter you will see a lot of restaurants have shut after the pandemic hit last year right Uh, and data says that when you have thirty percent of the restaurants have shut, lot of those restaurants which were being run by people who has a who is working in an IT company but he is running a restaurant, the, the first victims were actually those restaurants, because when you are doing it just as an additional thing, you realize that no, no, I mean for us it's survival. So you will figure and necessity is the mother of all invention. You will innovation will come when things are on fire, but when you when I have a safe job, I know my salary will come on thirtieth of that month. डोमिनोज ऑफ एशियन क्यूजीन it has yep. to be very big and we stick yep. we we'll have to go to the ipo and and i did try the bows i did try the bows they were actually pretty good pretty thank uh, you. about watering and finger licking good i would say okay thank you so thank with you. that gentlemen i'm so sorry we took 10 minutes extra of your time uh, uh any last parting words to people who are investors or who are starting out there are a lot of startups in this world Very last words, Shubhadeep, to the to the startup crowd. In one sentence, what would you tell them? I think this, to all the entrepreneurs here, yes, so entrepreneurship and running your own startup has its own kick. Don't yes, challenges will be there, but so is life. So we, we so so we live the life of an entrepreneur, and it's it's it gives a a kick of a very very different level. And exactly. to all and to all the investors, yes, I think the startup world needs a lot of investors. not just the money but i think the hand holding and the gateways of opening up new new growth opportunities so uh, money is just one part of it but money is the commodity part of it but it is that mentorship and the hand holding which i think the entrepreneurs and the startups need so just take the plunge and do i think this can be the be the best possible philanthropy through angel investing so that's what i would say but yes okay. do evaluate do evaluate anti So yes, we will. We are, it's it's we, it's a twenty four cross seven three sixty five days thing for us. We 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 live this day in and day out. So looking forward to support from all of you. So people in Bangalore and Gurgaon and some areas of the New Delhi, 
can can order from antifins they can try it uh, and uh, please put out the feedback whether it is good bad or ugly i would say i had a fantastic experience uh, having tried their food uh, and uh, so gentlemen thank you so much for being here uh, there is a feedback form that will be sent out to you uh, on mail who all have registered anyone else wants to get in touch you, uh, adil and uh, my email id and phone numbers are there you could reach out to us help you uh, we can help you in the this thing uh, if you want to become if you want to become an angel investor probably you know out of four we taken two two members we would taken who who may fit the criteria that we look at but in terms of startups yes out of 100 probably we will screen through uh, three and uh, maybe we invest into one so the probability is much lesser over there but yes happy to hear you out and uh, happy to be to lend an ear to what you are doing uh good to have you with us on this uh, saturday wishing everyone uh, a very safe time and a healthy time ahead please keep yourself masked if you are venturing out and uh, keep yourself hand sanitized if you are touching any foreign surfaces and hope you are near in dear ones and stay as safe and healthy as you are staying thank you so much time thank you thanks everyone uh, shubhrati